Let her be a baby. Praise God. Good morning, church. Good morning. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for the weather. Hallelujah. That we're not in hell. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's good. Praise you, Jesus. We got lots to be thankful for. Thank you, Lord, for air condition. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the man who invented uh, air condition. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Uh, we just welcome everybody and uh, where two or three gathered, there I am in the midst. And he's not joking. It's for real. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Whatever you need, you can reach, reach into the heavenly realm and receive. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. So we just come to uh, worship you. Father, we just bless you this morning. It's all about you. We just put our focus on you. And we know when we focus on you, we'll be walking on water. We'll be walking above the storms. Hallelujah. Amen. Doesn't matter what's going on. We keep our eyes on you. And uh, just bless the people who are watching. And uh, just bless those who are coming. That they get here soon. Hallelujah. We lift you up. Yes. We welcome heaven. We thank you. The glory is on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. It's going to pick up momentum. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Praise you, Jesus. Here we go. It's all about you.
You know, I think we should do that song three more times. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Just to help you get focused and uh, four times. be one, encouraged. Two, three, Amen. Four. I'll take four. Do I hear five? Seven. Oh, one, Hallelujah. Two, <laughs> God is so good. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all about him. That's why we come. It's all about his word. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the, the spirit of God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Father. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Protection and peace. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Your presence is like air condition. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. You're our shade. Uh, who's that prejudice guy there in the Bible who went to uh, Nineveh? Jonah. Jonah. What a Bologna. A Bologna Jonah. We need some Bible study lessons. That's good. I was just testing you. I was just testing you. Yeah, Jonah, I forgot. Well, Jonah, Remember the like tree me. came and gave him shade? And he was all, oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We can abide under your shadow. Perfect temperature all the time. God is good. So, hallelujah. Hope you've been rejoicing um, all week. Just week with the Lord personally. It makes it easier when you come to church, amen? Because you're in a habit of worshiping and praising Him. You know, when you're in a habit of worship and praising Him, victory is just coming out of your mouth all the time. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, isn't that awesome? Something stable forever. I mean, we go through emotional things, but boy, man, it's so nice to have something stable and secure. He's our rock. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. That's empty praise, treasures that fade.
there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you with our offering. We bring our tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. It declares that you live. You're the living God. Hallelujah. You intervene in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. That we can give. Hallelujah. We can give. Keep our faith on as we give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you with our lives. Hallelujah. With all our might. With all our strength. With all our might. With all our substance, Father. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. For your goodness, Lord. We thank you. You provided everything already. Hallelujah. Amen. We receive. Hallelujah. You're not holding nothing back. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Yes, bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you love us so fillingly, Lord Jesus. That anywhere that we lack, Lord Jesus, you just fill us with your love. Thank you, thank you Father.
much. He wants to give us everything. Let his love just consume you this morning. God is here and he's pouring out his love. Let him fill every empty void in your heart. Whatever you're going through, just surrender it to God and let him fill you with that love, with his love. Let him wrap his arms around you. Let him take that burden from you. He's got it. God has got you in his loving arms and there's no better place. There's no safer place to be. Jesus, we just ask you to pour out your love this morning upon every person in this building, every person watching, Lord Jesus. Just pour out more and more, Jesus, more. We need you, Father God. Fill us up with that love, Lord Jesus, your love that is so healing, Father God. It is mind-changing, Lord Jesus. We can't even comprehend the depths of your love. Father God, we just ask you to pour out into our hearts, into our lives, Lord Jesus. Pour that love into every area, Father God. We love you so much. Praise the Lord. I think it's appropriate to be reminded the word of God says nothing can separate us from his love. Amen. Amen. Neither principalities, nor death, Amen. nor powers, nor rulers, nor authority. Amen. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, it says sudden death, sudden glory. I don't know who this pertains to, but it's good to know that to be absent in this body is to return to the Lord. Amen. So nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
always get challenged with things, but um, God just kept reminding me to delight in him anyway. Delight in and have that time with him alone. You know, when, when you go away, wherever, if you drive or whatever, it's, it's that time with him to, to talk and to share and to really release things to him. You know, really bring those things to his feet. Like, really let go. And uh, delight. It, it, there's just like a joy comes, a peace comes. A real peace comes. It's supernatural. And uh, that's the place we're supposed to be, actually. That's the only place we're supposed to be, you know. We're his sheep. We hear his voice. And it's only his voice we should be listening to. Not the voice of our mind, not the voice of reason. You know, it started to bother me and God reminded me of something. He said, familiar spirit. And then I was thinking on it and I realized how badly a familiar spirit is because it's something that is part of almost who you are because you grew up that way in a mentality that you just thought was the way it is. But it didn't, never meant that it was the Holy Spirit's mind or the mind of Christ. It was just, it was shaped through, you know, life, family, circumstances, traumas, whatever you went through. That's how your mind got shaped. And when a familiar spirit comes, it's so sneaky and deceptive because it makes you think that it's just, it's just fine. It's just you. This is how it's been. And you accept it, which opens the door and almost disarms the Holy Spirit's work in you, which is dangerous because now you get challenged in your mind with fear and anxiety and panic and it's this and that and blah, 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 blah. Your mind starts racing and that's dangerous and that's how the enemy works. And I was thinking about how the enemy works. I was thinking about how he really, he's, he's, he is deceptive and, and we got to be careful because it, he works through our emotions. He works through everything that was connected to us. And we just accepted and thought it was just us. And that's where the mind of Christ has to be superior, like every, every day, every moment. When it starts to come on you, when that lie, that wrong voice starts to come on you, Suddenly, you're like, no, that's not the voice of truth. It's the spirit of truth, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in you. Whatever happens, happens, you know, and we don't understand. But if we sit around reasoning it to death, again, we're opening up reasoning where we have to just shut it and say, well, I'm going to trust in your love. Like the word was shared just now. Nothing can separate us from his love. We'll always be safe with him. Always, forever, peace. And he wants us to have a light heart in this week. Like, so light, you're just not even feeling it. It's like his grace is sufficient. He just keeps carrying you. You can have moments where it hits you, where you cry, where you're like, okay. But then you give it to him again. You lay down that emotion quickly. And you come into the presence of God and ask him, cover me, cover my heart, cover my emotions again, Lord. I'm shutting this ridiculous, familiar spirit that's just from hell, because it is. People don't actually recognize it. The body doesn't. And we live in that realm too much. But today is a new day, because this is your breakthrough in your mind, in your spirit, in your life. And so whatever happens now, you're going to recognize even more so the enemy and you're going to fight back fast and you're going to stop it fast. So we're going to put our eyes on, on him. And we, we say, I love you, Lord. I lift my voice. We're going to lift our voice and thank him and adore him and delight in his love and his grace and his beauty and his forgiveness, his redemption and it's wow, it overwhelms us over and over. So we're going to sing this out. Just, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We're here. We're grateful, Father. We're grateful.
Show me a glory. 
is good. Amen. All the time. Amen. All the time. Well, thank you. you. May be seated if you haven't already. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God's good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank God for air conditioning. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the time. All the time. <laughs> there you go. So if you're at home this afternoon watching this at two o'clock, uh, I hope you have air conditioning where you are because we've got it here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's just open up with a word of prayer this morning. Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. God, you show us your glory each and every day. God, that's the cry of our hearts. Show us your glory, Father God. We want to just bask in your presence, Father God. We want to experience all that you have, want, and desire for each one of us, Father God. Oh, we thank you, God. Just continue to allow uh, your blessing to continue to flow upon us, Father God. We thank you for that. And Spirit of God, we thank you as we look into your word today, Lord God. We thank you for what you want to reveal to each heart. Father God, as always, we pray that we not be just hearers of the word, but we be doers as well. To your glory and honor, we praise and thank you right now in Jesus' precious name. And everyone in agreement said? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2021. Hallelujah. Fresh start. And I know, you know, that we, we put that out in January, but it's applicable right now on the 27th of June. Amen? amen. That's a rousing amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> fresh start in prayer. Fresh start in worship. Fresh start in loving him. A fresh start in the way that we think. For us to be whom God has called us to be, we need more. Say more. more. We need more of the abiding and empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and in that vein of loving him, we've been talking about these last few weeks, we've been talking about knowing God and God's character. And understanding God's character, very, very important. Understanding his character lets us encounter his greatness. And if we're going to love him, we've got to know him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so today we're going to start talking about this aspect of knowing God. We're going to start talking about the grace of God. God's amazing grace, amen? Now, let me ask you, what would you think if you went to buy a car and the salesman told you that you either had to push the car everywhere you went, okay, or had to pay extra for an engine? I, you think you'd probably be getting ripped off, okay? Because, you, you know, something was obviously wrong, okay? Because cars come equipped with their own supply of power to get you where you need to get going. Amen? And the engine is part of the purchase price of the car. Um, so we have a responsibility, obviously. You know, we get in the car and we can't just get in the car and just sit there. Okay, we've got to do something. You know, so we've got the ignition key. We get the key, we put the key in the ignition, we turn. We've got to steer the car. Okay? Uh, but our effort does not supply the power for the trip. 
See, when, and see, so many Christians, uh, they're failing in their Christian lives. They're living defeated lives day after day, month after month, year after year, because you know what? What they're trying to do, they're trying to push their Christian lives. Okay? They don't realize that the power for the Christian life is already under the hood. Amen? Amen. And that power, you know what that power is? Glad you asked that question. That power is the grace of God. That power is the grace of God. His inexhaustible supply of goodness by which he does for us what we could never do for ourselves. Amen? You know, and, and some of us might be under the misconception that we have the power to pull off the Christian life. We've got it all in ourselves to be able to do this. And, and if that were true, Okay, we would be no different than a than a non-Christian, than an unbeliever who who tries to keep the Ten Commandments. It's all human effort. But you know what? God, thank God in His grace, Hallelujah. He has supplied every believer, every believer with a magnificent provision, and that magnificent provision is is inexhaustible supply of goodness that is referred to and called grace. You know, we can't earn it. Okay? We don't deserve it, but he has made it abundantly available. Amen? Amen. Now, if Christians, if we, we as Christians need to grasp any truth, it's God's amazing grace. You know, grace is not well understood today because the word has been used so flippantly or without a proper understanding of what's truly involved in and with it. And, you know, one, one reason a lot of people have problems understanding grace is that they have a misconception about God. Because people don't see God as a holy God. Come on. They don't see where they need His grace. Now, grace means God doesn't have to do anything. You know, we've seen that He is, he is totally self-sufficient. As we've been talking about this aspect of knowing God, we've seen that He's totally self-sufficient. And He's in need of nothing. Grace means that all you are and all that you have comes because he chooses to give it to you. Not because you can demand it and not because you deserve it. You know, and man has devalued God. Man has made him into merely a glorified man. See, the God of most people today does not look like the God of the Bible. You know, we've, we've created a God who, who accepts wrong, who doesn't judge sin, and who does not have retribution as one of the, the moral laws of his universe. And we pay a high price. We pay a high price for this, God, because we have this, the attitude, well, it's okay to do wrong as long as you don't get caught. Okay? And this permissive attitude, it kind of shows a warped view of God. You know, he is totally, totally holy. He's totally pure. He's set apart from all sin, and therefore, he owes sinful man nothing. Absolutely nothing. Anything that we get from God, do you know how we get it? We get it because of His grace. And we've got to understand that. God owes us nothing. Yet in grace, He has given us an inexhaustible supply of all of His goodness. Amen? See, the grace of God is possible. The grace of God is possible because of the sacrifice that His Son made for the salvation of sinful mankind. Now, we're only alive today. We are only alive today and not consumed because of what Jesus did. And we'll only go to heaven because of what Jesus did. Amen? Now, see, if it were not for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we would have been wiped out in judgment. Come on. We would have been wiped out in judgment. But Christ's death on the cross freed God up to shower with us with his grace rather than pour out his holy and justly deserved wrath upon us. See, but God's goodness is only available because of his grace. The reason, the reason, this should be one of the main reasons, the reason that we worship the Lord Jesus Christ is that because of him, God's grace was unleashed. <laughs> God's grace was unleashed, amen? We worship Christ because he dealt with the one thing that kept God from extending his grace to us, our sin. Have your Bibles this morning. Trust that you do. 
And turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5. And let's look at verse 12. Romans chapter 5. Verse 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Okay, so this verse right there is contrasting for us the first Adam with the last Adam, which of course we know is Jesus Christ. In other words, in Adam all die. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 tells us that. We will die because Adam sinned. We were in Adam when he sinned, okay? Adam was our representative, if I could put it that way. Well, so somebody said, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pastor David. I, I didn't choose Adam to, to represent me, okay? I want to represent myself in this thing. I mean, I, I think I'm a pretty good person. But God says, you know, hey, what? If you want to represent yourself, you've got a problem. You've got a problem. You've sinned too, just like Adam. You haven't done any better than he did. You know, sometimes you hear people say this. Maybe you might have even said it yourself. I don't know. But people say, oh, well, if Adam, Adam hadn't done it. Okay? If Adam, ha Adam hadn't gone and done what he did. You know, but the fact is, if Adam, Adam hadn't sinned, somebody along the way would have done it anyway. All right? Story told of a, a fellow named Sam. He was a forester. And uh, he, he was chopping down trees every day. And... Every time the boss came by, he would hear Sam saying, Oh, Adam. Oh, Adam. Oh, Adam. And one day the boss asked, what, Why do you moan, Oh, Adam, all the time, every time you're out here chopping trees? And Sam replied, Well, if Adam hadn't sinned, I wouldn't have to do this backbreaking work, which is part of the curse. So the boss said to Adam, Yo, Sam, come with me. He said, So he took Sam to his home beautiful home, had a tennis court, a swimming pool, there was a butler, there was a maid, and the boss says, you know, to Sam, Sam, all this is yours. You never have to complain ever again. I'm going to give you all of it, this perfect environment. And Sam, he couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. And the boss said, now, you can enjoy everything all the time, okay? Only don't do one thing. Okay, there's a little box that's sitting here on the dining room table. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. So Sam went out and he played tennis every day. He swam in the pool every day. Had his friends over. But yeah, after a little while, he got kind of bored. There was only one thing in that house that he didn't know about. That little box on the dining room table. And he walked by every day. He kind of, you know, he kind of ignored it the first few days. But then he got kind of curiosity. kind of walked by and... No, 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 the boss said not to touch it. And he kind of walked away. But, you know, every day he was kind of, you know, coming closer. And, well, one day, what did he do? He walked over, picked up the box, opened it up, and out flew a little moth. And he tried to catch this moth, but he couldn't catch it. Well, suddenly the boss showed up. And he found that the box had been tampered with. And immediately he sent Sam back out to the forest to chop trees. The next day, the boss heard him groaning, Oh, Sam! Oh, Sam! Oh, Sam! Some of you will get that a little later. Anyways, even if Adam hadn't messed up, we would have, we would have because all have sinned. Uh, Romans 3, chapter, verse 23. So, original sin, original sin means that we all were born into this world with the mark of condemnation on us. But the atonement of Jesus Christ, amen? The atonement of Jesus Christ for the sins of all mankind has neutralized the effects of that curse that got placed on it through, through Adam and satisfied the, the demands of a holy God so that God is now free to be good even to sinful people. Now, for instance, Jesus says, this is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, God causes the Son to shine and the rain to fall on the unrighteous as well as the righteous. <laughs> okay, so as warm and as beautiful as the sunshine is today, the, the, the righteous are not getting the benefit of the sunshine today. 
neither are the unrighteous, okay? The, the, the sun, the rain, it, it hits both people, okay? That's a part of God's common grace to all. We'll call that common grace, okay? I mean, the air falls under common grace as well. You don't have to be a Christian to get oxygen, okay? God gives common grace to all, but he reserves his special grace for his own, amen? See, now, non-Christians, they'll, they'll not always thank God for the air or the water or the sunshine that keeps them alive, but everyone who names the name of Jesus Christ, should, we should wake up every morning thanking God for his grace, amen? Amen. You know, we, we know it's all because Jesus Christ satisfied the demands of a holy God. So grace, grace is only possible only because of Christ Jesus. Now, see, God's mercy is, a, is, is distinct from his grace, okay? In that grace means giving a person something he doesn't deserve, while mercy is identifying with somebody's misery. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And let's look at... Verses 4 and 5. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, uh, verse 5, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved. Amen. By grace you have been saved. So in mercy, God's heart went out to us in our helpless condition. In grace, he, he gave us what we didn't deserve, which was salvation. You know, mercy is what a mother shows when she cuddles her sick child. See, every misery that we experience in life is to some degree related to sin. Either our own sin, somebody else's sin, or just the contaminated sin world in which we live. But because he's rich in mercy, because God is rich in mercy, when God sees our pain, he feels it, okay? He experiences it with us. But grace must precede mercy, because God can't help us with our mercy until he first deals with our sin. Okay, that's because God's grace it must deal with sin before God's mercy can quell the miserable effects of sin. See, and, and, and once God has dealt with us in grace, Okay? He can act towards us in mercy. I mean, you wouldn't think much of a doctor uh, who was willing to deal with the symptoms of a serious illness without looking at the disease that caused those symptoms. You wouldn't want to go to that guy, you know? I mean, if you want God's mercy to deal with your misery, you first got to accept his grace to deal with your sin. That's why John wrote to the, to the believers in 1 John 1, 9, familiar passage of scripture, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1, 9. See, confession of your sin frees God up to, to show you that mercy. And if you're, if you're miserable, Okay, I'm not going to have a show of hands of who's miserable today here or not, okay? But if you're miserable, you need God's mercy. Amen? But you can't have his mercy until you've allowed his grace to take away that sin. And see, once we come clean with God, he's able to help you with the things that bring hurt. See, uh, one day there was a, a Sunday school, a teacher asked this little boy, what's the difference between grace and mercy? The boy said, well, I asked my mommy for a peanut butter sandwich. And she made it for me. That was grace. But she put jelly on it too. That was mercy. See, mercy happens when God gives you the jelly. Amen? When he deals not only with your need, but goes overboard and deals with the effects of that need in your life. Okay, mercy is when he provides sweetness to your experience. We need that because many of us have made Many of us have made decisions, maybe we've had bad experiences, which might have messed us up. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know what happening in, in your life, maybe the abuse uh, somehow uh, by a parent, maybe some rebellion on your part, something that you shouldn't have done has caused you some real problems. It, it could be emotional, it could be mental, it could be physical. Uh, 
It could be any one of those things that's created that misery for you. But see, God is free to help you because why? He is so full of mercy, the result of his great grace. But, you know, Lamentations, you can mark down Lamentations 3, verse 23. What does it tell us in Lamentations 3, 23? That God's mercies are what? New every morning. New every morning. Praise God. God's mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. Every day. Every day, God has something new to show us as he deals with some aspect of our life. We should wake up in the morning and say, hey, God, your mercy is in you every morning. What do you got to show me today? What do you got to show me today? See, the problem is we aren't looking for it, and so we're seldom going to see it. I mean, it, it would be, if we would be fully aware of what God does in one 24-hour period in our lives, stop and think about it. We don't even think about it sometimes, you know? We'd be amazed absolutely amazed at how many things that he does within a 24-hour period that relieves some of the burdens that are on us. And, and you know, we, we get kind of, I don't know, flippant with that. Is what we, we just, well, you know, so you, you hear a lot of people, and hopefully not Christians, but, well, that's karma, you know? Well, no, it ain't karma, you know? Hello, okay? We dismiss so much of what happens to us as, well, that was just chance, that was luck, you know? But this verse says, hey, in fact, just before it says in Lamentations 3.22, uh, it says the Lord's mercies, that we, it's, it's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. Okay? So every day that we wake up, okay, you woke up this morning, you opened up your eyes after your, your beautiful night sleep last night, you opened up your eyes, hey, it's by the mercy of God. Amen? Well, we've all, and you know, that's fine. We've all made promises. To, who many made promises to God? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Lord, if you get me out of this, God, I'll serve you. If you solve this problem, you know, I'll, you know, do whatever, right? If you, if you, if you raise me up off this sick bed, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. If you give me a good doctor's report. See, and, and we fail. <laughs> We fail to keep many of those promises. So why doesn't God take us out? I'm not talking on a date either, okay? Why does God not take us out? Because of his mercy. Because of his mercy. And why can God show us mercy? Because of his grace. See, because he looks at Jesus Christ and is so satisfied he's able to deal with us in mercy and pity us in our pain. I mean, no one wants what he or she deserves. <laughs> I mean, think about it. If you're guilty of something, does a guilty person throw himself on the justice of the court? You never hear them saying, I, I throw myself on the justice of the court. No, you, you don't hear that. They throw themselves on the mercy of the court, right? And that's what we need, and that's what we do when we cry out to God and, and say, Lord, hey, God, I messed up. What day of the week is it? Come on, hello. <laughs> it was my sin that got me here. And maybe it might have been the sin of somebody else, but I, I just right now plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. See, the Israelites, they cried out to God uh, for, for mercy from, from the misery of, of that Egyptian slavery. And their cry reached not only to his ear, but it also reached to his heart. So what happened? Well, we know, of course, Exodus chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, he sent Moses to deliver them. Those Israelites, they wanted mercy, and so should we. You know, it's kind of like the, uh, <laughs> the aging Hollywood star who had her photograph taken. And when she saw the pictures, she said to the photographer, that picture doesn't do me justice. And the photographer looked at her and said, lady, with a face like yours, you don't need justice, you need mercy. <laughs> and she never hired that photographer again. But anyway, hallelujah. With lives like ours, with lives like ours, we don't need justice. We need mercy. See, God is free to, to pity us in our pain. Okay? He, he's there to, to walk with us in that struggle. He's there to hurt where you hurt. Why? Because his great grace has unleashed his great mercy. 
Mercy means God mixes it up with you in the hurts of life. I'd like you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And let's look at verse 8. You know, this is a good verse. I mean, we should have this one memorized, amen? 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Amen? That you always have an all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Hallelujah. See, God's got something for everything that we need. Think about that for a moment. God has got something for everything that we need we need. There's no such thing as insufficient grace. You know, now I don't know, I, I don't want to embarrass anybody today, so I'll, but you can just, you don't have to stick up your hand, but maybe you've done this before. Maybe you have had the embarrassment of bouncing a check. Okay? And the reason that a check usually gets bounced is why? Because there's not enough money in the account. They call it insufficient funds. Okay? But you know what? God has no problem covering his checks. Amen? He has sufficient grace. Amen? The Bible says that God's grace is so inexhaustible, so awesome in its supply, it never runs out. Amen. Hallelujah. God's, God, grace is designed not only, not only to save us, also to keep us. See, when, when, we become, when we become Christians, when we become born again, God supplied every need, every single thing that we would require, that we would need for spiritual life and for growth. It says it right there in that verse. In fact, that's why Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, grow in the grace, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, so Peter's saying, hey, grow in your understanding of grace. Grow in that understanding. The more that you understand about grace, the more, guess what, you're going to enjoy the Christian life. Amen. Do not let anyone stop you from growing in your understanding of the awesome supply of the grace of God. You know, there's, I'm telling a lot of stories today. Uh, there's a story told of a man who, who paid to go on a ocean cruise. And the fare took up all of his money, leaving him nothing for meals for the week-long trip. So he brought along some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for some today. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so he brought these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches along with him all the while his fellow passengers were enjoying sumptuous meals and, and buffets every evening. And, you know, every night he was going to his cabin in, bar in embarrassment and he was eating his peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And, and this guy, he was miserable because knowing that everybody else was, was, were eating this incredible food, this incredible, uh, bountiful amount of food, but he knew that he couldn't enjoy any of it because he'd used all of his money on the ticket. Well, at the end of the cruise, as the man was leaving the ship, one of the porters asked him, Sir, how did you enjoy the cruise? He says, Well, I, I really loved the ride, but I was always hungry because I couldn't afford any of the food. And the porter looked at him in, in astonishment and said, Sir, sir, the meals were included in the price of your ticket. The meals were included in the price of your ticket. You were miserable for no reason whatsoever at all. See, and I tell that story, and I think, you know, when we get to heaven, and I'm not wanting to get there today, uh, when we get to heaven, okay, God will say, you were miserable for no reason at all. You were miserable for no reason at all. All of your answers, all of your answers were available in my grace, but you didn't grow in grace, and, and you never came to understand my sufficiency. See, when you met Jesus Christ, everything that you and I needed for our Christian life was included in the salvation ticket, if I can put it that way. It was included in the salvation ticket that he gave us. But if you don't grow in grace, 
You don't know all the goodness that God has supplied for you. You know, there, there's a lot, if I could put it this way, and I'm going to close pretty close to this very shortly. There's a lot of many, in fact, there's many millionaire Christians. I'm not talking financially here, okay? There's many millionaire Christians that are living pauper lives, okay? Because they haven't grown in their understanding of God's great inexhaustible supply that was provided in Christ. I'm talking about his grace. We're millionaires because of his grace. Amen. Amen? We've got to start living that way because God's provided super abundantly for us. His grace is, is sufficient grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not let anyone stop you from maximizing what God wants to pour into your life through his grace, that inexhaustible supply. I mean, why would anybody want to try to stop you from, from doing that? But you know what? I, I don't want to shock you. <laughs> but there's some Christians that I think their calling is to make you spiritually miserable. <laughs> they, 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 they're go, they aren't going anywhere spiritually, and they want company. You know, like the guy on the boat, you know? Like, it was all there. It was bought in the price of the ticket, and he's eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And a lot of us, God's provided so much through his grace, spiritually speaking, we're eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And he's provided so much more for us. But there's a lot of Christians, they're, hey, they're happy with their peanut butter and jelly, and they think you should be eating peanut butter and jelly too. <laughs> Come on. So they aren't going anywhere spiritually. They want company. But God says, my grace, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. Let's leave it there this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Father God, we thank you today for this amazing, amazing gift that you've given to us, your grace. And Father God, I just pray for each one of us that's here today, those that are listening later today, Father God, that we tap into that inexhaustible supply of your grace. Father God, you have provided abundantly through your grace and your mercy, Father God. And Lord, I just pray that we begin to, God, begin to step into that, begin to access that, Father God. Lord, you have made so many great and precious promises. And Lord, we don't want to, to get to glory and find out that we did not tap into all that you want and have and provided and desire for us as your children. God, wake us up to the reality of what you have done for and in and through us for your, through your grace, Father God. And Father God, I just thank you today. If there's anybody here, the sound of my voice, anybody listening today. You've not experienced the grace of God and the, and the fact that you've not given your life to Jesus Christ. He's here today to welcome you into his kingdom. You're here today. You say, well, you know, maybe you're trying to do it through your own strength. You're trying. It's like that illustration I had at the start where you're, where you're trying to push that car by your own strength. You know what? You just turn the key, turn the ignition. Salvation, that's the key. You accepting Jesus Christ, that gets the car running and moving. And you're here today. You've not made that decision. Ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. Anybody here, you lift up your hand, pray with you. Anybody out there, maybe you're watching this today with somebody and you're, you're not born again. And the person that you're watching this with, they can talk to you about what you need to do to ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. Scripture tells us that if we uh, believe in our heart, we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And so for those of you today that are making that choice and that decision, praise God, hallelujah. Welcome into the family of God in Jesus' name, hallelujah. We praise and worship you, Lord, today. But Father God, I pray for those of us, Lord God, that have already asked you into our hearts, Father God. We are, as I said, millionaire Christians. But God, so many of us are, are living those, those pauper lives, Father God. We're not tapping into, Lord God, what you're great. And, and God, where right now, just in the quietness of your hearts, you're here today. Where do you, where, say, where do I need God's sufficient grace right now? In the quietness of your heart, just ask, Spirit of God, where do I need that sufficient grace right now? 
would just take just a quiet moment right now. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. You're having a conversation with God right now. God, where have I not allowed you to be more than enough in that situation, that circumstance, that issue? Where do you need more of that sufficient grace? Because God, that grace, oh, hallelujah, it's more than enough. It's more than sufficient. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, I just pray for each one here today, those that are listening, Lord God, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, Lord God, God, where there has been a, 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 a shortfall, or there's been a, a blockage in receiving in this area, Father God, Lord, we just speak to that right now. We speak breakthrough into this area right now. And we thank you right now for your amazing grace to flow in abundance into this situation, into this circumstance, into this issue. We thank you right now. God, let that grace, let that grace flow, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Receive that today. Receive that grace in that situation today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Worship you, almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Give you praise, glory, and honor. Jesus, precious name. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, God's good. Amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. We just have a, a couple of announcements. Before we get to those, I... I want to pray over the offering today. Praise God. I just thank uh, everyone for being so faithful with their tithes, their offerings, their first fruits. Uh, those that have given through the offering today, also we've seen uh, just the finances come through, the, through e-transfer as well. So just thank each and every one of you for being so faithful with your giving. Praise God. Let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you as we come to, to bring our tithes, our offerings, our first fruits to you before your throne today, Father God. Lord, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you for just your outpoured blessing, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for just as, as people are giving their first fruits today, Father God. We thank you that, again, that this is a part that's represented the whole, Father God. We thank you that 2021 sanctified, set apart, holy to you, Father God, your people are going to walk in the absolute fullness of all that you have, want, and desire for them. Father God, we thank you. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are a provider. You are the all-sufficient one, and we thank you. God, we just pray right now every need of every household represented here today, Father God. Those needs are met, Father God. We thank you of every need of Royal City Community Church is met today as well, Father God. We thank you for that blessing. We ask, as always, that you bless both gift and giver. Your glory and honor. We praise and thank you for that now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I uh, just want to thank uh, those again uh, that had brought in the, um, the uh, items for the Elizabeth Fry Society. Uh, Margo was able to put those bags together this week, and we were able to deliver those on Friday. So thank you to every individual that helped out. They were very glad and blessed to receive those, so thank you for your involvement with that. Uh, also, just remind you that we have uh, Wednesday night is prayer. Uh, we meet from, uh, it's online through Zoom, uh, every Wednesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. So just encourage you to be out, be a part of that on Wednesday nights. Uh, what else do we have? I, I'm looking up at these, uh, the Bible study, there you go. <laughs> uh, we've been going through the book of Hebrews um, each week. I think we're up to about chapter six now. Uh, just breaking down that uh, book verse by verse. So after 2 o'clock today, you'll be able to watch the Bible study in the book of Hebrews along with this message will also be available and the service actually will be available as well after 2 o'clock today as well. Uh, I think if anybody has any uh, needs, help, information, you can email us. Uh, there's our email address uh, there uh, up on the screen and also that uh, phone number, that's my cell number if you need to contact Myself in any way, um, you can do so as well. So, praise God. Well, God is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'd like you to stand with me, if you will, please. There are uh, three three gentlemen I think I spoke to today. I, we have a special Father's Day gift that we gave out last week. Um, you guys weren't able to be here last week, so we want to make sure we get that into your hands. So, please see me after the service. Uh, thank you for being here. 
Uh, we trust, hallelujah, as we're moving towards July 1st, we're supposed to be getting to stage three of what's happening with, the, uh, with COVID. Uh, they are saying, according to what I read on the website, that masks are, um, how did I put it? How do they put it? Hmm? Optional. Well, it sounded like it was optional. So you can, uh, um, I'll get the right word. I've been saying it like all week and now my mind's gone blank as to what it was. Recommended. Recommended. Now, when I hear recommended, that means, yeah, you can if you want, you don't have to kind of thing. So that's what recommended means to me, okay? So, but you can wear your mask next week uh, if, the, if the restrictions have come off on July 1st. We're also allowed to have more people out as well. So I know there was a few people away. There was some sickness. Others were not able to be here today. Uh, everybody needs to be back in church, amen? Hallelujah. We, it's just a, so awesome being able to come together and just so... Next week, actually, if we get to stage three, uh, I think it goes past 50 people. So we, it says you've got to be under 50. As of July 4th, which is next Sunday, we can go beyond the 50. So uh, you're welcome to come back out to church. Please join us. I'm speaking to you. Anyway, so thank you for being here today. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. You are dismissed. Amen. Thank you.